Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today I got a Terran vs Zerg for you that I played yesterday on the live stream and I figured this would be a good example game to talk about one very important subject when playing Terran that I have found out so far and that is sticking to the basics. As you may be aware, uh, I have been playing Terran over the last couple of months or so. I've pretty much always played Zerg for like the five, five year, or the, like the first five years uh, of me touching StarCraft 2. However, over the last couple of months I've been playing quite a bit of random as well and I've basically been learning the game again from a completely different perspective just really because it's fun and also uh, because I want to be helping uh, you guys as well. I get a lot of Terran questions nowadays, so in this particular video I want to be going over sticking to the very basics and what exactly does that mean. Now, in a lot of scenarios in Terran vs Zerg, the matchup goes as follows, right? The Terran player is gonna try and harass the Zerg for as long as possible, just to sort of like deny them from really establishing that economy, and then the Terran player is gonna basically be forced to sit back until their upgrades finish up. Now, that is in most games. That is in most games. You will go for like Reaper into Hellion, into Banshee, into Liberator, all that kind of stuff, just to sort of like push the Zerg player backwards. In this particular case though, and in a lot of other cases, you will notice that your opponent is going for something that will screw up that plan. And what exactly should you be going for uh, when you are going to be thrown off your initial plan here? Now, we are currently playing at the higher Master League regions. I believe this is played at like rank 25 Masters or so. My opponent, Mr. Mammoth or whatever, Mammoth, uh, is also a high level Master player here. So it's not like he's doing some sort of terrible aggression. I know very well that it is going to be committing to this. Now, there's one very important thing to note right here is that it's like in this particular case, I'm going to be talking about how to deal with this aggression, but the philosophy and like the strategy and the thought behind it goes for every kind of matchup. So Terran vs. Terran, Terran vs. Pearl, Terran vs. Zerg, all kinds of different aggression. The basic idea is that you follow this sort of stuff up by simply playing smart. Now, a lot of people will still be switching into a quick factory and go for the Hellion play, and switch into Banshees and hopefully deal with the kinds of uh, economy aggression that the opponent is going for. Now, when you are up against the Zerg player, and this is really important to note if you primarily play uh, Terran yourself, they are basically not capable of going for anything else but all-in initially, okay? Like, obviously, they can play macro, but if they want to go for aggression, they need to commit very, very heavily to it. It's not like they can just, like, blow up your depot wall right here at the top of your ramp and, you know, just basically macro their way out of that. That is very, very difficult. He is immediately saying, by putting up this expansion in my natural, that he is not going to go for any kind of, um, you know, economy-focused play. Now, StarCraft 2 is all about the economy. And you gotta keep in mind that usually if you go for the Hellion, into like Banshee, into type, like kind of the Liberator type style, you are basically focusing on one thing and one thing alone. And that is slowing down the Zerg's economy. You got to make sure that you slow down the Zerg economy so that you will be able to have the upper hand in the mid game. However, in this particular case, we don't really need to worry about slowing down the Zerg's economy because guess what? He's done that himself. Like, he's already giving up that early game economy just to get that natural up right here. Now, what exactly does that mean? In this particular case, I am going to follow this up straight with my mid-game style. I want to be going for, like, a plus one, plus one, um, stim pack, combat shield, like, uh, concussive shell type timing, right? That's usually what I go for. I usually go for Marine Marauder Medivac. That seems to be the style that I enjoy playing a lot against Zerg. Obviously, there's all kinds of vulnerabilities with that, but long story short... I am immediately transitioning into that style right after realizing that the Zerg player is going for that. And once again, the main reason for it is that I know that my opponent is like, you know, basically giving himself a huge economy deficit by going for this aggression. Now, in particular, in this particular case, I am up against a Zerg player that is going for Roaches. So what I decide to follow it up with is a really quick tech lap. And I got the Concussive Shell already going up. All my, uh, all my Marauders actually already done. So I can do a little bit more damage to these Roaches and potentially pick off a couple. Now, I am just playing this super, super safe. I know that my opponent is going to be, um, you know, very far behind in the economy. As long as I manage to hold on for a long amount of time. So, since as a Terran player, right, since as a, as a usual, or like in a usual scenario, when you are a Terran player, um, you are going to be in a uh, economy um, upper hand, I suppose, like you're going to be in a, at an advantage, or at an advantage, as long as you are even in basis. I am not too worried about this. I know very well from playing Zerg for a very long time myself, that if he is going for this kind of aggression, right, and he is trying to basically uh, kill me right from the get-go, he is not going to be able to have a natural. Like, he just simply cannot. 
So we're darting back and forth here. But the idea is that as long as I have the economy upper hand, like let's say I have a thousand income and my opponent has 800 income, I know that, you know, the longer the game goes on and the more evenly I trade, the bigger my advantage becomes. And that is true for so many situations in StarCraft 2. So even though right there, right? I basically traded evenly. It wasn't like the I I don't know exactly, but units lost, resources lost. I guess I guess I did get the upper hand right there just from the engagement and the micro. Um, but the main thing to take away from this is that at this point in time, my opponent does not have an economy that can really match mine. If you have a look at income, sure it has 23 harvests versus 22. Well, actually, I may not be mule mining right now. Yeah, no, I'm just now dropping the mule. But you'll be able to notice, because I am Terran, and because I know very well that, you know, mules mine for a lot of income, look at that income spike up right now, right? As long as I'm even in basis, I'm gonna be in a great, great spot. And I'm basically bank banking on that fact right now. The next little bit that I want to be talking about, so the basic idea is, right, transition straight into the mid game and stop with the kinds of economy harass. Um, the second part that I want to be talking about right here is going to be specifically for um, Terran versus Zerg. So, as a Terran player right now, what I see a lot when I um, take a look at, like, uh, lower level streams, for example, or, like, Terran players in general, um, they manage to hold the Zerg's aggression or Proto's aggression or whatever um, in this scenario. And what they follow it up with is straight up all out aggression. And that is something that sometimes will win you the game, right? Um, oftentimes, the Zerg player is going to try and catch back up, uh, back up in economy. So they're going to, like, sort of sit back and are going to try their very best to make sure that they get, like, um, you know, an economy up as well. And oftentimes, if you then push out at that moment, the Terran player is going to be able to pick up the victory right then and there. However, there's also a second option. The Zerg player could not be focusing on economy, and he could just simply be saving up a lot of army to push out once he's got, like, a sufficient amount of it, or once he gets, like, an upgrade going. So let's say my opponent was making non-stop army right now, and I move across the map. I have no way to retreat with this force. I know very well that speedlings are way faster than my army. Um, so what I'm following it up with is just simply sitting back. And there's a couple reasons for that, right? First and foremost, I know that I have the economy upper hand. I already talked about that. I uh, already talked about that. I got the economy upper hand. There's absolutely no reason for me to really be moving out uh, in that sense. But then I also know that there is a chance that my opponent is just simply sitting back, saving up army, putting all his eggs in one basket and moving out when he's got a sufficient amount of it. So... In this particular case, I know that my opponent definitely is going to be pretty far behind, and there's a very small chance that he actually will be following it up with an economy. I mean, as a Zerk, you basically always want to be a base up on your opponent, right? And if you're even in bases, you may as well just try and put all your eggs in one basket once again and go for one all-out attack. And that is exactly what my opponent is focusing on right here. Sure, he's got a couple workers in a natural, but those are just mainly transferred from the main base. He is going for an all-out aggression. And I know that this is a very common style for Zerg. So, at this point in time, I am just waiting. I'm waiting for my opponent to move out. Now, I act actually, I was hunting some, some of these rocks. I was getting a little distracted by the rock hunting, uh, which is a thing on, like, Andeon, the Ruins of Andeon, or whatever this map is called. Uh, way too many rocks. Not completely used to that map yet. But the basic idea is that I'm just waiting for my opponent to move out, and I'm not really i'm not really taking any risks i'm just banking on my bigger economy i'm just trying to trade evenly with my opponent and in this particular case as you can see um we will be able to clean up his aggression that was almost undoubtedly going to be coming now once more do i move out right now i know that i once again may be caught off guard by a bunch of econ or like a bunch of army from my opponent so the smarter choice right here for me is to maybe move out a little bit across the map see if i can force some more units out of him prevent him from joining up but the smartest course of action here is to just simply sit back and once again bank on that bigger economy to win a couple minutes down the line now normally as a terran player your mid game style will be something like plus one plus one and stim pack finishing up or something like that uh, the infantry upgrades are extremely good and if you play them correctly you can all finish them up at the same time um, and you will be able to just do a really strong timing attack so even though i'm rocking down or knocking down the rocks here right it may seem like i'm going for some sort of aggression i really should be backing up it it's actually a little bit too risky by me uh, but what i'm really making up for here is basically a push out and i'm getting really far on creep actually i forgot about that part um, what I really should be doing here is just back up. I'm trying to force my opponent to make more army, basically preventing him from making drones here. Yeah, I am gonna back up right now. But basically what I'm gonna be doing here is wait for my plus one plus one upgrades to finish up and then move out. Which, once again, was my initial plan all along. It just sort of got thrown off initially, um, because hey, I, I obviously had a lot of like terror or like a lot of Zerg army sitting at my front door. 
Um, but the basic idea here is once again, skip out that early game aggression that is gonna try and deny their economy initially, because there's no need for it, because they're already denying their own economy uh, by going free all-in. Switch into your mid-game style and just try and wait for the smartest engagement. Don't take any risks when you don't need to, right? You may be able to finish up the game right now. Like, maybe I could have stimmed up that ramp right there and finished off the game, right? But he had a substantially... Like, he had a big army. What if he would have had, like, a bunch of banelings burrowing on the ground there, right? I could have been in so much trouble. So instead, what I'm doing is just simply waiting, sitting back, and watching my upgrades timer. So in this particular case, you can see my opponent is... Or my upgrades are about to finish up, and that is when I start moving across the map. All um, while this has been going on, I got the economy upper hand, so I'm just playing this super safe. For whatever reason, uh, the recording stopped right there for a second, but this is where I'm stimming up the ramp right here, and I'm basically just finishing up the game with taking all kinds of guaranteed advantages rather than taking a risk um, early on and potentially still losing the game. So, sticking to the basics usually is definitely the correct approach in pretty much all scenarios, in particular when you play Terran, just simply wait sit back, bank on the economy that you got, get a bigger army, and push out when upgrades finish up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, hit me up with that like button down below. And if you have any suggestions of upcoming Terran videos that you would like me to make, let me know down below in the, or in the comment section of this video, because I am definitely keeping an eye out right there, because I would really like to help you guys. And other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, all right? And I'll see you in the next one. Boom!